Welcome back. Towards the end of the previous part, Joshua was taken, I think that's the best way of putting it, taken by Weissman, mind controlled in some way. I'm still hoping Kevin's done something in regards to the stigma. they will actually help him at some point. If we break free, we shall see, we shall see. Anyway, we've got to face off against this guy here, the TM Dragoon, which I can't scan or anything because Joshua's not here, so uh, I think it's the best course of action is to do the clock ops, etc. and get everything going normally like we normally do. Uh, or maybe a priority, actually. What are you doing? Oh, that's not too bad. It does interrupt, but... Let's actually go with these clock ops. Clock ops probably more on the priority than thinking about it. So if we can get ahead of it, it's probably a better idea. And get clocked down on it. Good. It's gonna interrupt Olivia, but that's fine. Okay, maybe anti-sept on it? Well, we'll see, we'll see. Nope, resist. Okay. <laughs> Let's move over there, actually. Where it's wise, I don't know. I've got some crits incoming. Let's get Zodiac going. Can we also get Earthwall? We can. Fantastic. Okay, so Dark Matter. We'll get it on the crit, so we'll leave that there. Hello. What would that have done? I don't know. Earthwall is the name of the game? Oh, wait, no, that's Trails in the Skies now. I don't know if I got the idea that this game was called. Earthwall? That's strange. You know, if I can, I'm gonna put, like, you know the little bit down below the video where it says the name of the game? There's a little picture of it and stuff like that. If I can, I'll change that to <laughs> a game called Earthwall. If, if I can actually find one called Earthwall. So then it will be. The name of the game, everyone. I always love Dark Matter for some reason. So if I can keep this going, I'm happy. And at this point, we'll come out with another. Are we on? Are we on? You. Right, so, yep. Okay, and again. Got a nice pattern going now. It's good, it's good, it's good. We should have you dead at this rate. Not having used our S crafts, that's good. There we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Indeed. Sector. Themilios? Themilios? I guess this is the end of the line. So this is the core sector, huh? Yes. You feel how the air pulses with barely contained power. It can be no mistake. Oh. I'm sure in the Oriol must be ahead. You have to be, I think. Guys, this will probably be our last fight. It's where we're going to stop a rubber loss in the shutdown phenomena. It's going to be where we free Joshua from Weissman once and for all. Guys, please, give me everything you still have. Not sure how much it'll be, it will be, but of course. Always, my rose. Come. Curtain rises on the final scene. Indeed. Indeed. Which obviously means we're going to make a little save, heal up, etc. So, be right back. Alright then, let's go. Oh, I expected to just jump straight into it, but okay. Oh, of course, I haven't got Cloak, have I? Oh dear. This gives you a little chance to fight things. I can't see them either because I haven't got... I haven't got Joshua. I, I feel feel the missing presence of Joshua. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the home of all that is sacred. Joshua. You passed the final trial. Excellent, excellent. 
Be proud, you are worthy to be present for the resurrection of the Shining Rin. The Oriole. Yeah, not interested in that at all, thanks. I'm here to put a stop to all this stupid weirdness. And I'm here to get Joshua back. Ah, yeah, certainly I'm afraid that won't be happening. What do you mean? Joshua, hey! No matter how you try to deny it, the truth remains. Joshua's mind is a little more than a construct. The stigma on his shoulder is proof. Proof that he is of Ouroboros. That he is my possession. How dare you! Perhaps if Joshua had somehow erased the stigma of his own will, mm -hmm, he could have found release. But alas, he never managed to get that far. I think he did, and he's fooling you. It would be best if I kept him as a research subject for a bit longer. Such unbelievable evil. It was so revolting, it almost moves man to poetry. What? <laughs> Livia, you're crazy. Goodness me, such insults. And how impotent they are. You see, I suspect Joshua realized very quickly what the stigma on his shoulder meant. Surely he knew something like this exact situation would occur. Ah. Yet he never breathed a word of his troubles to any of you, did he? Not even a whisper. And conversely, none of you were sensitive enough to notice his pain. What power these bonds of yours have. Are of complete earth-shaking potential. I... Uh, triple dot. But come now, there's no need for long faces. You've been granted the privilege of being here at the glorious moment. All that remains now is to make the correct choice. Privilege? Choice? What are you going on about? Perhaps I should start from the very beginning. How much do you know, I wonder? About this city, and the events that occurred here with the Oriole nearly 1,200 years before our time. Um, so that's the Oriole. It most certainly is. One of the ultimate artifacts, capable of producing literally endless power and shaping miracles with it. But the ancients sealed it away, despite its limitless science-shattering potential. Why do you think they would do such a thing? I don't know the whole story, I'm sure, but... The data left in the tower said it was having a bad influence on people and society. Ah, you actually managed to put all those together, did you? I don't make this quick, then. Allow me to play the role of Professor once more and elucidate the truth of the matter. Millennia ago, areas of the sky granted humanity the seven treasures. For brevity's sake, we'll say each one utilized a facet of reality, in order to manifest miracles in their own way. Humanity split into seven factions, each centered around a treasure to pursue an ideal based on the powers of that given treasure. There are essentially seven nations. Hmm. One such ideal was this. Liba Ark, a city in the sky with the Oriole as its center. A paradise removed from the troubles of the ground, where each man's gospel could grant any wish with the Oriole. Mankind lived a bountiful life here, absolutely free of strife. Over time, however, People's lives were swallowed up in the artificial bliss granted to them by the Oriole. Not just physical ecstasy, but even dreams were provided by the Oriole. False realities is granted people long sought spiritual fulfillment. The people of Liber Ark depended on miracles that were all but a narcotic, began treading the path of annihilation. The Ark's inhabitants lost all sense of ambition and ethics and slid into madness and despair. Birth rates dropped catastrophically while suicide and bizarre crime ran rampant, and the whole of society walked the path to a slow demise. But the Oriole passed no judgment on these people. It merely granted the miracles that asked of it. So the shining jewel of the sky became a den of evil and chaos. This was the situation Celeste Auslazer and her conspirators faced over 1,000 years ago. They built the seal and the device towers, even as they fought off the guardians of the Oriole, which it sent forth to save itself. And at last, they sealed not just the Oriole, but the entire city. Did I say save? Sealed. Not just the Oriole, but the entire city in another dimension. 
That's what happened 1,200 years ago. I never would have imagined. I would grant that the Helder Elves layers did quite well given the circumstances. But think for a moment. The cost of Celeste's victory was humanity being cast forth into a land of chaos, forced to start again from nearly nothing. Think of all the suffering man endured then, and endures now as men savages one another with endless petty wars. Can it truly be said that she made the right decision? Well, on the other hand, we have gained or regained orbital technology, and once again live bountiful, easy lives. At this rate, only two ends are possible. Either we continuously seek to dominate one another, and are able to control ourselves, obliterate each other in an orgy of conflict. Or, like the people of old, we sink into narcotic self-pleasure. Let automated systems run the world and live as farm animals. I have a physical or mental annihilation of weights. There is but one single path for humanity if it wishes to survive. The beast of mankind must be led to the point where they obtain the two things they required for true enlightened sentience. Flawless rationality, capable of resisting any temptation and unswayed by even the fiercest circumstances. A peerless intelligence, ever capable of finding the correct solution, unmoved by crude emotion. This is the true goal of the gospel plan, to do what even the ancients could not, to advance our minds to what they should be. An ambitious goal, if nothing else. I would so appreciate it if you would not look at me as if I were a megalomaniac. Yeah, Megalo megalomaniac. <laughs> a megalomaniac lunatic, go with that. Man cannot help but change and reform through fear when confronted with something beyond his imagining. In that sense, what better tools exist to drive evolution forward than the Oriole? I will guide mankind onto the correct path to salvation with the greatest treasure from Idios. That is my duty as one of the Angui, my duty to our Aberos and its master. <sighs> Boy, I bet you're a real hit at parties. Not. Not, really? Oh. oh. What's this? A flawless rationality capable of resisting any temptation and unswayed by even the fiercest circumstances? Peerless intelligence even capable of finding the correct solution unmoved by crude emotion. The point of any of that? Seems someone was sleeping during the lecture. As I said, mankind faces annihilation through either conflict or mental entropy. The only way we can... No, no I, I heard the lecture just fine. It's not what I'm talking about. What I'm trying to say is, is there something we can do about those problems you described if we know they exist? Hmm? Like Joshua said to Luve. We are completely powerless. We might not be guided by flawless, peerless, whatever, but everyone's working together to get through the crisis going on right now. I've gone across all of Laberle and seen it with my own eyes. Don't you think we're capable of getting on just firing out some kind of fossil grand transformation? Really now, picking out survival by flocking together is how beasts and insects live. Is that really all you have to offer on the potential of humanity as it stands now? Is there anything else I need to offer? The same as a problem. Is, this, is there a problem with being the same? And we're living beings too, you know. Heck, aren't I just talking about the strength of life? What? I don't think people are just animals, of course. I just think they're living, honestly. But that spark of life from others is your driving force. That's what it means to live. We don't need to be omnipotent super beings or whatever you want them to be. We just need to be aware of one another and help each other out. Hmm. And you know what? I bet the people who sealed the Oriole away in the first place felt the same way. I mean... Sure, making miracles mundane and relying on nothing but them is really bad by itself. But the biggest problem there, more than anything, is that it makes it so there's no point in knowing or helping each other. That's... awful. Right. Right before the final act comes to a close, our heroine delivers a marvellous rebuttal. And cannot live without other men, even if he be as a god. Speak true words of wisdom, Estelle. <laughs> Still sticking to the mutual assistance argument and invoking the power of 
human bonds, of all things. I don't ask you to read a history book before saying such nonsense, Miss Bright. As an example, consider the overpowering nation-crushing machine called War. This man not only capable of being ground beneath its treads. Absolutely not. In the middle of the biggest war in LaBelle's history, my mother gave her life to save mine. Because of that, I chose the path of a brazen now. Look at me. I'm here to stop you, the crisis you caused, to prevent another war from breaking out. All thanks, in the end, to my mother. And let's say, you just made my point for me. People are not powerless. Not against anything. Phew. You're quite good at trite answers, if nothing else. You don't really seriously believe people are powerless. And you've convinced yourself humanity can only be saved by you turning us into emotionless super beings. That makes you really pathetic, I think. What? I mean, I mean you never, you'd never known the joy of trusting someone or helping them. That your only smug satisfaction comes from watching people struggle. That's just, it's too sad. Hmm. But even if I feel sorry for you, I am a bracer. And I ignore the fact that you're getting a lot of people involved in your little pity party. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop you. By force. Hm. You ignorant little girl. How dare you talk to me like that. Very well then. The professor would like for you to prove your theory. You lie. So this is the evil eye, is it? What? Do be patient for a moment, everyone. I promise this will be quite a show. What are you planning, Weissman? Joshua? Forward. Joshua, no! Come, Miss Bright, do show me. You claim humanity can stand against forces larger than it. Show me proof you can stand against despair. <laughs> Fine. Oh, 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 oh dear. I like the fact it did that, but it didn't show him breaking the Avroboros symbol. That's cool. I mean, I had no chance there. Blorf. Joshua. Oh, quite an impressive move. Leaving him with the Divine Blade for a while seems to have paid off nicely. It does always feel good to see a product of one's craft honed to an even finer edge. You awful. And now for the climax to our little show. Joshua sees her. No. Yeah. Oh, still. And thus, the strength of humanity proves to be nothing more than a house of cards before a hurricane. But I am an academic, after all. I do understand the necessity of proof. So we'll have Joshua provide the final test. What? What indeed? It will be a simple experiment. I'm going to have Joshua end your life. Once you are dead by his hand, I will break his hypnosis and return him to his senses. No, you can't. Oh, I do wonder what kind of expression Joshua will have on seeing you dead at his feet. Doesn't it just get your blood pumping? Don't even think about it. Do that Joshua would... He... Yes. This time his heart may just be crushed to powder. That happens, however. All I need to do is construct him a new persona. And then I can offer him the chance to become human yet again. And observe the results. <laughs> I can hardly wait. Stop, stop. It's too cruel. Isn't it? Now come, Joshua. End her. Joshua, sorry I said I wouldn't die. I promised I'd walk with you. Joshua, please, no. Please, Joshua, awaken. I believe in you. Joshua, don't give in. Don't run away from reality, even if I die. To be honest, if you, die, if you did die, I'm not sure I could face reality. What? I honestly wanted to like Joshua just just be like surprise motherfucker. Just that sort of, just that moment like wait what? Huh? 
The timing for a dramatic twist could not have been more fitting. Joshua? Sorry, Estelle. Didn't mean to scare you like that. What? What? This is absurd. Can't possibly have reclaimed his will with the... Wait. Stigma. What happened to the stigma on your shoulder? Oh, yes, uh, that. The stigma you carved into my flesh and mind is gone. Thanks to you, it has been shattered. But... How? I had hypnotic... A hypnotic wedge of sorts jammed into the stigma. Key to a particular command. I've been bugging at the wedge on my own since then, getting it ready to shatter the stigma the instant someone put pressure on it. What? You... A... What now? A wedge. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to keep our promise the way things were going. I asked Kevin for a little hypnotic assistance after we crashed. Kevin? This is Kevin Graham's doing it? He was just a fledgling little squire, but it seems I underestimated his bag of cute tricks. A mistake, I'll not repeat. At this point, I owe him my freedom and life. Of course, I owe someone else the same for pointing me in the right direction. What? Who else? No, oh, Cassius Bright, damn you. Dad? Oh, the letter. I gave you before we got on the RSA. Yes. That's why he wanted to make sure only I read the letter. Just in case anyone was listening in. I suspect your best chance of breaking the curse lies in Father Kevin's hands. How to use that key is a decision that must be yours alone to make. Win your freedom by predicting what Weissman will do. <laughs> That's just like General Bright. Now for crying out. That could have dropped me a hint about this at least. Honestly, I'd been worried about it for a long time. Kept wondering what you would make me do if you took control of me again. So knowing you, I decided to bet everything on one idea. You couldn't possibly resist ordering me to do one thing I feared the most. Sure enough, you ordered it. And that broke the stigma. I'm finally completely free of you. Joshua. You foolish little child. If you just obeyed me, you could have aspired to such heights. I have advanced you in ways you cannot even dream of. Much like how Estelle turned you down once. I really have no interest in any of that. Besides, if I've learned anything in this whole journey... One's path in life isn't given by someone else. It's something you find with us as you, you search for it, no matter how dark your surroundings. <laughs> Absurd. The history of man is stained with the blood of fools who tried finding your path. But a guiding light to shine on that road, it shall remain lost. You're wrong. We use the light, we each give off to find our way together. That is how we find our way found our way here through all your cynical traps. That's right. <laughs> you do like your speeches, don't you? You shambling wreck of an enforcer. Show me, then. Show me this light you claim will guide you through the darkness. No, oh, hello. And I shall show you in turn. The blinding light of the loyal servant of the Grand Master. The power of the faceless one of the Angui. Bring it on. The one being blinded here is you. Oh, they're in such a weird order now at the bottom. I don't like this at all. No. No, I'm not stand for it. Alright, so let's get all these clock ups going. No idea what that was. But hiccups now. Hey, don't do that, it's mean. Got my buffs. Okay, so let's see about a clock down. Mm, try it there, we'll see. Okay, it does work on them, cool. Magmatic EX? Oh, you brought us together at least. Hopefully we'll stay like that so I can get an earth wall out and very lovely movement down. I don't plan on moving, mate. Oh, but thank you. Uh, th thank you very much for that. Yeah, um, Zodiac. And let's see here. Let's see about a evil eye. Hmm. Yeah, it 
Das ist ein bestes nicht. Okay, lock it down. Yeah. So we can see what it does now. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking of war finally then. Ah, you would, wouldn't you? You would. Hmm. Carrier bomb. Yeah, I'll give her the carrier bomb. Okay, so, lock down on there uh, again. Just want to get all these things slowed down. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, hello. Well, Zodiac, anyway. That's quite annoying. Hmm. That's all I think. I'll just get one that one out. Initial weapon only usable by skilled art practitioners, driven by users' brainwaves. Oh. One of the angry known as the Faceless uses forbidden curses. That bonus critical, yeah, but... Let me actually do it at this point. God, it's like, how do I stop that? How do I get around that? It's a tough one. It's all rest on Joshua at this point. Let's see about... Have we got a crit coming up or anything? I, I really should wait, shouldn't I? It's just that sort of like, it's tempting to just do that. Let's throw out heels and stuff then while we're waiting. Curia. I'm hoping a crit comes our way, I really am. Okay, so yeah. I'm doing and get like the earth wall going. Okay, one's down. What's what's what? What's going on here? Ooh. Hopefully, I can survive this little attack that this will do. Okay. Let's get the earth walls going. I wanted to get the cherry bomb. Not that. Hmm. <laughs> so I think I'll just keep things going nicely for now. My controller died at this point. There we go. Right, so what we're we doing? Where are we? That's a crit coming that I want. Good, because that's when I'm going to unleash Joshua's 200 now. Again, I want to ensure I survive and everything. Hmm. So I do want earth walls going out. I really do. Because that would be so helpful. Nice. Here comes our earth ball. Fantastic timing. That was it. That was your move. Was 
that. Alright. Let's see what can unleash on you there. I needed her. Where did you go? Where? Oh my, what a shock. To think that you would be so damn tenacious. There. Uh, I'm back. Where? Where was I? Hey, Professor, about the time you dropped that holier than thou act. About time you dropped that holier than thou act. Your confidence drains away like sand in a sieve, Weissman. <laughs> Pathetic. You haven't even realized you're standing on your graves. What? <sighs> Weisman, what are you doing? I had intended to offer it to the Grand Master like this, but I must change my plans. It's time you realize just what it means to oppose me. Oh? Literally the noise it made. What in there? He wouldn't. He's fusing with the Oriole. I mean, as you do. Ew. Is that even? This is getting more absurd by the minute. This overwhelming power can any stand. <laughs> oh, the sensation even better than I'd imagined. Shall we experiment then? Power of apotheosis, unflinching reason, indomitable intellect, guiding humanity to the future. You're insane. Well, obviously. Okay, so buff up. That's the pattern here. I'm thinking if we can get Nerf Wall out, we can't, so let's clock up. It's that thing. If, like, if I could get a Nerf Wall out earlier, I would have done it, but... Considering it's the Oriole, essentially. That should have just killed us. There, a lesson learned, I think. What? I survived, it was fine. A lesson in real power. This is nuts! Techs aren't hitting him at all. It, it, what? It's some kind of barrier up. If it's negating even our arse and our best techniques. Learn, children. The Oriole is the treasure of space. One of its very, very many powers is forming an absolute barrier, incomparable into simple orbital arts. You cannot even touch me. The evil eye? You. Yeah. Evil eye? My goodness. Christman, let me. Let them go. His eyes. Magnificent, you may be a wreck of an enforcer, but oh, what a waste it would be to kill you. I'd much prefer to etch another stigma into the depths of your mind. This is before I'll give you a renewed sense of hope, then tear it out by the roots and leave you writhing. Nothing pleases me more than to see that shift in your expression from hope to despair. I do so look forward to it. I believe this. Bad taste. Any word for you at this point is sick. Huh. 
Oh, Lufe. I suppose I should have finished you off. Oh really, Louvé? What are you planning on doing? Not even your dragon can break the Oriole's barrier. I suppose it can't. I have a question for you though, Weissman. Just how involved were you in her mail? Wait, what? Now what a thing to accuse me of. That's purely the fault of the Empire's hawks, no? Why would you ever think I would be involved? Because you're a snake. You appear before people in the moments of weakness and whisper plans into their ears that lead them to destruction. In doing so, you achieve your goals without ever dirtying your belly. That's just your way of doing things. Oh, he... Would he? The ringleaders of the Hawks were nothing more than political losers who had nowhere else to go. There were a few questions I couldn't answer at first, but even the war ten years ago was part of your plan. It occurred to me. Everything made sense. <laughs> I see. Just largely as you surmise. <laughs> what? Of course, really, all I did was introduce them to a band of Jaeger dropouts I knew and put the name Hamel in their ears. Just doing that was enough to push things to war in the blink of an eye. Oh my, you unleashed a hell of a lot elsewhere. I just think what happened to Erebonia as a result of that. No. Yeah. <laughs> Simply one more testament to the sinful nature of man. Astounding. You truly seem to be the foulest man in history, monster. What you've done is... It's unforgivable, you monster. I think I'm going to be sick. See, essentially as I thought then. You're taking this rather well. Personally, I was hoping you'd be a bit more resentful. <laughs> You've forgotten. I have long since learned to stay my anger. Wherever you knocked me out from behind back there, that is an insult to the Blade Lord cannot abide. That alone I should be paying back in full. What? Yeah. Absurd. So the Oreo's barrier is absolute, it cannot be harmed. Wait, sword, of course. Yes, the sword granted to me by the Grand Master. It's like your staff. It's a demon sword forged through the divergent laws. Uh, so similar to McBurn's. Careless of me. Yes, you. Get away. Get away, you insect. Good. <laughs> Too late. System failure. System failure. Oh no. Luffy. Forget about me. Your path is clear. Strike him down. Luffy. Do it. Ain't got, ain't got much time. Do it. Dare strike one such as I. Whether the absolute barriers, but a trifle of the Oriole's power. Ugh. I shall bring forth its full force and let you savor the despair. Nay, fiend, the despair shall be yours. Hey, you. As a bracer, as a citizen of Le Burl, and more than anything as a human being, I'm taking you down. Weissman, this is the end. What the hell? <laughs>